Hello everyone, welcome to FlatWeb TV, the monthly BMX Flatland freestyle show where we're talking about the top news and happenings. My name is Justin Hoey. I'm Anthony Bulio. And this is FlatWeb TV. Well, welcome everybody to Flat Web TV, episode number four. Can you believe it? Okay. Episode four. I'm stoked. Yeah. You know, we uh, we've been doing this for quite a few months now. It's thirty percent of a season. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. mean, our season is kind of weird though, because it's going to be all year. Twelve a year. Long. Twelve yeah. a year. Yeah. So season one, number four. <clears throat> We're really excited about it. Thanks to everybody that's watched the show, and yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, things are moving good. Things are moving forward, and. Uh, a lot of people have been really happy about it, but uh, let's jump right into it. We've got a lot to let's cover today. It, yeah. This is going to be one of our best episodes yet. Of course. Absolutely. Every single one is better than the previous one. It should be. So, all right. So, first thing we're going to talk about today is, uh, once again, we mentioned this last time, but we're going to be at the Portland Bike Show. So yeah. If, you're, if you are in the Portland metro area, we are going to have a booth there. We're also going to be doing two shows. <clears throat> so, the Oregon Convention Center, we'll have, uh, we'll have a link here on the bottom and also the poster somewhere. Probably not up here where you yeah. can't see... The miracle of life right no. up here. Um, but uh, come on out. It's April 9th and 10th, and uh, it should be a really good time. It should be a blast. Uh, flatland riding, street riding, handmade bicycles, the whole deal. Yeah, there's, they're going to have a fashion show, actually, as well. Yeah, there's going to be like a bicycle fashion. apparel fashion show. So skinny jeans and, and flannels? Okay, maybe. I don't think it's that far down. You okay. never know. Uh, but it's going to be a good time. Goods BMX is going to have a booth right behind us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Shad's a good friend of ours. and. Uh, it's going to be a really great show, so come on out if you're in the area, for sure. Uh, other things, um, so some sad news. Yeah, a little bit of a bummer to start off the show, but uh, my dog left the country today. He is no longer an American citizen. It's a weird thing to say that, but um, yeah, my dog moved to Japan, of all places, with my ex, and uh, the way I think of it is he's bringing a little <laughs> bit of joy to Japan, to Japan right now, so uh, just want to... Give well, a shout out to my boy Momo. Absolutely. And yeah. we'll leave it at that. Yeah. I know it's tough, but uh, we miss Momo. So if I'm off today, that's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think that's going to be. But some better news for you. I'm getting a new bike. Uh, finally. I am stoked. So yeah. I haven't bought myself like a, a pretty much, it won't be a, like 100% complete bike, but uh, my wife is getting me a brand new bike. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had a new bike in ages. So it's going to be a sick child, 19 and a quarter. Um, it'll probably still have the same wheels on it I have now because I just bought those last year. But, it's uh, the Metropolitan? Uh, no, no, no. It's going to be the Instrumental. Oh, right on. And I, lo and I like the Instrumental. I had one of the first in Instrumentals okay. that I got from uh, our buddy Eric Stefano. Yeah. Um, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to be great. It's going to be a little bit lo a lot longer than what I'm riding now. I ride a Sick Child Metropolitan now. And it's, oh, that's right, it's yeah. 18 and a quarter, 18 and a half, something oh, like that. That's a big jump. It is. Well, you know, I'm six feet tall. I'm riding a really tiny bike. I want to do some, start doing tricks that are a little bit more flow. So I think this is going to help me out. Cool. I'm really excited about it. Look so look forward to that. Yes. I'm really excited. I've got emails in to my friends in Japan to get a hold of a new frame too, but I won't talk about it until it becomes a little bit more of a reality. What, do you, what is it? What do you want? Well, it's uh, Russia's frame. It's the uh, the Rapture. Was that was he riding that bike? He was riding space art video. Space art video. Yeah. Okay. Uh, simple design. Um, double triangle. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to that. Me too. That's that's gonna be cool. We'll yeah. have new bikes. Sweet. New bikes. Um, <laughs> speaking of new things. Yeah, new things. Uh, we all know that Cream Magazine has finished, but taking its place has been Art, Art Magazine. Mm -hmm. Tell uh, us a little bit about that, because I don't know too much about the story behind this. I don't either. I've ordered one. It's not arrived yet, but um, the first issue came out. It's got a big story about Matt Hoffman in it. Yeah. It's uh, French and English, so bilingual. Very cool. Um, there is a Flatland-specific article in the first uh, issue called uh, Flat Is Flat Dead or Flat Is Dead? I, I can't remember which. No, actually, I do remember. I think it's Is Flat Dead. Is Flat Dead. Okay. So, uh, should be some good reading about the current state of Flatland. Um, if you have the means and can pick it up, I, I'd recommend it. From all accounts, especially what uh, was posted on Flat Matters, it almost looks like a collector's piece, mm -hmm. like more than a magazine. It's so well put together and the quality is so high. It seems like something that you'd want. Um, to put on, you know, your table or just to hold, whatever. Yeah, I, I kind of like cream. Cream used to be anyway. There's oh. more than just a magazine. 
Oh, yeah, anybody can pick up that magazine and just appreciate the photography in it. For sure. And, and just the, the, the amount of detail in all the design of every aspect of the magazine. Definitely really high really quality. <coughs> so uh, look for that. I hope that continues. And, and moving forward, we see you know, many, many more issues of that magazine. Yeah, I think it should be good. And uh, so something else new as well. But also other media. Yeah, other media that's yeah. new but not so new. Kind of like the last thing. Um, so you guys have you know, probably been watching Props Video Magazine. Diversion. Maybe some Diversion videos. Yeah. A lot of you maybe have seen uh, Terry Adams Dreams DVD. But uh, one of the pe people that's behind some of the great music that's in those videos, <coughs> um, who it goes by AF the Namesayer. The Naysayer, yeah. Yeah, the Naysayer. He is coming out uh, with his uh, first CD. It's going to be coming out here real quick. Uh, I don't have the, the, the actual date, but it should probably be out by the time the show's out. Right on. And um, it, another, you know, uh, uh, somebody who's contributed to the Flatland community, trying to break out on his own, trying to make a career in the music industry. Um, so go check it out. We're going to have a link to it. <coughs> but uh, I think something really important. You know, we've got a lot of, of you know, great writers in the industry that do other things other than writing. Yeah. And so definitely need to support that. It's always interesting to, to kind of get a little bit of the behind the scenes, what goes into a video or the music, and, and it's, it's certainly uh, something that we just overlook because music yeah. is so easily available now, but yeah, the CD release should be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I listened to one of the tracks, and uh, we'll try to play one of the tracks uh, while uh, the show's, while we're talking about this. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So check that out. Um, <coughs> Moving on, we have some uh, pretty big contests that just went down. That's right. Two big contests. Well, there was, I think there were more than two, but the two that kind of stuck out. Two big stuck ones, out to us. Yeah. yeah. So I think the, uh, the first one has got to be Flatland Unlimited 7 in Toronto. Yeah. So we've talked about this before. Well, you, why don't you talk about it a little bit? I'll bring up one of the videos. Well, it was, uh, you know, is it the first stop? The it's, second stop? It is the first stop in the American Flatland League. And uh, we'll go ahead and just try to turn that down here. So yeah, we're checking it out right now. It, it just seems like you know some pretty high-profile riders were there, even though it wasn't so international. Very yeah. North American feel to it. Absolutely. Um, but no less impressive as far as the riding goes, and you know the, the top five people were, were you know amazing. Oh, to absolutely. Us. You know they're they're top five <coughs> anywhere they go. So yeah, classic Terry Adams <laughs> pulling out those huge big American. Tricks, as I like to call them. I think Riding I coined a that purple waltz. Right. Yeah, uh, I like is, the color. Which is now shipping. Finally shipping. Yeah. The uh, the the flatware frame. Sorry, not the vaporware frame. And the I actually like frame. called it before. Yeah. Uh, it's shipping. You can pick it up at uh, most major BMX outlets. Yeah. Um, but uh, once again, some amazing riding. Big tricks. Line. Yeah. A lot of big tricks. I think so. Percy. Percy was killing it. This guy is on fire right now. Give yeah. him another year. Huge contender. Who's number two? John William Provost. Yeah, I think. <coughs> where, uh, he's from probably Montreal area, some French Smooth Canadian. Smooth flow, just, you know, very... Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. I mean, effortless. It looks effortless. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was, you know, very cool. He's definitely into the, the contest scene and, and, and knows how to get the crowd going. And then, of course, Terry. Number one. <laughs> Come on. Classic Terry Adams. Just killed it, as I mean, usual. And what's great about Terry, and I don't know if uh, you think this way, but what I'm seeing when I see him compete is he's always stoked when he when he's riding you can see it on his face he's yeah he's he's not just going through the motions and, and doing like muscle memory he's he's into it he's into it there's emotion into you it. you see the face when he pulls something he's like yeah I did it yeah it's, it's just like it's like when he pulled it for, for the first time like I know like when yeah. there's combos that I pull I've been pulling them for a long time I still pull them again it's like yeah sweet I nailed it landed it so another great contest yeah. uh, another one of the contests that we had was <clears throat> was the uh, the passion contest uh, in Europe, the yeah. Duke BMX. So kind of, I think it was almost the, the same weekend or maybe the weekend before this. Very close, yeah. Very, very much around the same time. Um, and uh, another great contest. So all the big heavy hitters in Europe, I believe, are there. So Adam was there. Uh, and a big surprise, I think, in the uh, who won first place. Maybe not, was, well, maybe, not, maybe not a big surprise, but... It's a surprise, but not a surprise because he's, yeah. he's been killing it. Yeah, and for how old he is. Yeah. So I think in the, the props groundworks video, he was already in his mid forties. He's maybe I don't he's know, right. I, I think he, 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 he's fifty. James White. James White. He's not fifty. Come on. I don't know, man. He could be fifty. He rides like a teenager. He, he is amazing. No. Um, considering the competition there with Dominic and, and Dez, like Adam that, Kuhn. that was a that was a packed pro class. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was a big, big. All the heavy hitter, all the heavy hitters were there, and uh, I, I'm I'm amazed. He did this really cool whiplash link. Yeah. That was so slow. I swear it was. It looked like it was in super slow motion. But smooth. But perfect. Yeah. I mean, and some same with the back wheel links. I mean, it was just flawless. So uh, again, another great contest going down. Dominic's mm -hmm. riding just always floors me, and and if I was a judge at that contest. Yeah, you'd have a hard time. I'd have a real hard time, but like Dominic, especially the way, the way that he rides, and of course the the video edits that we get don't show all of the the miscues. True. But True. what I saw was just flat out impressive. Absolutely, we had yeah, we had uh, there were some great coverage coverages of both the contests, and yeah. uh, thanks for everybody that submitted footage, and uh, we had a, a nice little special. Uh, credit for our uh, oh, the yeah. Flyland Unlimited one. So yeah, <clears throat> actually check him out. Great filmmaker and uh, great footage, great riding. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, speaking of other uh, big events, great footage, but uh, big tragedy. Yeah. So um, everyone, I think a lot of people have seen the uh, the Space Arc uh, Kobe Japan edit that we put out Space on Arc the fifteenth of Flatland March. Yep, I think that went up. Yep. So I was there just a few weeks before the, the big earthquake and tsunami hit, and we were editing the video right when it hit. So it, it kind of hit a little extra close to home. And, you know, I've got so many friends over there, and, and the Flatland community has so many friends over there. Uh, it was really just heartbreaking to see. Um, the, the edit kind of took on a different, different vibe when we put it out. And, uh, a little more somber, you know, but nevertheless, I mean, it's just a community that's that's going to, to build back up and, and come back in a big way, and, and the Flatland community there is no different. There is, a, the I think, a couple of people, at least one, uh, the 430, have mm -hmm. put out a uh, kind of a charity t-shirt, um, and I know they've been kind of hard to get here uh, across the pond, and I don't know if any other countries are having trouble getting those t-shirts. They're pretty cool t-shirts. Um, even my fiance tried to order one, and she lives in Japan, and they were completely out of stock. Yeah, they're cool shirts, too. All the proceeds <laughs> go to, to help, uh, you know, the efforts there to rebuild the Red Cross and whatnot. So we kind of did our own thing. Uh, well, I mean, you're pretty instrumental in this yourself, but well, a great, uh, something great that you had a great idea and put together. Yeah, yeah. so uh, just a couple of days ago, we, we put together a very quick design. Um, you can see it here. It a uh, little sprocket there, 43 tooth sprocket, you know. It says uh, basically, do your best Japan. You know, flat web TV logo, BSR logo. Our buddy Joe printed these basically with no warning. He just printed them up. Yeah. Super so cool. they're very limited edition, but we've got uh, five mediums and five larges mm -hmm. that we're going to try to sell. And if you get in contact with us, we'll let you know all the details. Basically, 100% of the sales will go to the Red Cross, mm -hmm. the International Red Cross. So I think we're going to we're going to put these up at about $17, which you know it's kind of a bit for a T-shirt, um, but. Again, all of that will go directly to the Red Cross. You can email us. We'll, we'll work out the PayPal and the shipping. We'll send all the money over there, and uh, we'll do Absolutely. a good thing. We've got five mediums, five larges, and that's it. If you get in contact with us and you fit one of those sizes, you'll get one. The first five mediums and the first five larges. Yep. If you get in contact with us, we'll get one of these. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> white on, or I'm sorry, red ink on white shirt. Very cool. So... If you're interested, get in contact with us. Absolutely. So if you head over to flatwebtv.com, click on the, cat, the contact link and fill out the form, and uh, we will connect with you to get that set up. Actually, I might try to set up a, a little bit of a PayPal link just to we'll get We'll try to make it easy <coughs> for you. We'll make it as easy as possible. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, we uh, definitely, our hearts and prayers go out to the people of Japan, and, uh, you know, hopefully things will get back on track and uh, 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 a speedy recovery to uh, normal life. Certainly. It's kind of fallen off the, the CNN radar, but it's still happening, so just, yeah. just keep them in your thoughts. It's still a big deal. Yep. So, All right, so uh, on to our next story. Which Something really cool. Yeah, it just popped up actually this morning. I think I mean, this, we just kind of came up Yesterday with this this morning. Yesterday or this morning, yeah. Yeah, um, so one of the videos that got posted on Global 
um, is an edit of Matthias, Red Bull Edit. A Red Bull Edit. Gotta love those Red Bull Edits. And you know, I'm a big fan of web edits, and I'm a big fan of well-produced web edits. Sure. This, is, this one is no exception. Um, so there was a great edit that put out, and it has a bit of a different theme than a lot of Flatland videos. Yeah. This is not a Flatland video. This is a BMX freestyle video. Certainly a BMX. Absolutely. I, I, you know, Matthias has been pretty clear that he is not a Flatlander. He is a BMX. He is a BMXer. Yeah. He loves riding BMX bikes. Doesn't care what the discipline. Loves it. And I think this is kind of a, a new evolution. You know, the new evolution of, of uh, maybe maybe where Flatland's going. I don't know. I'm not coming full circle. Maybe. Maybe coming full circle. You yeah. know, I think it was maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, maybe a little bit more, when maybe things started to diverge a little bit. I think people started to separate out. Yeah, maybe that things. first uh, meet the street contest, that two hip contest, um, started to to splinter the two groups where you could focus on street or you could focus on flatland, but it was really hard to focus on both because they were progressing at such a, a right. big rate. They are, you know. And you look at yeah, I think with what Matthias is doing, you know, this web edit shows a great street style, flatland style combined, just melded. With you know, just with a lot of modern street tricks, a lot of modern flatland tricks, and there's some tricks in there. I was just blown away. Those quick pop outs to, to hang fives or to nose wheelies, the the you know spastic manuals to nose. It's it's getting crazy to where I don't even know how to describe it. I, I don't, and I I mean it was intense. And now, if we let's take let's go back a couple years. Yeah. Maybe, maybe another maybe about two years. Another person who's doing the same thing and maybe laid a little bit of groundwork was Mr. Sure. Travis Collier. Sure, he's been doing it for a while. Absolutely, and I think he just made uh, the top 20 list of you know most mentions in the the BMX online world, which is a little a little weird. A little weird. I thought that in the, I think there's only two Flatlanders in the whole thing. A Japanese rider. Yeah. One Japanese rider does Keda. some does some great back wheel links. Yeah, and Mr. Collier. Yeah. But uh, Travis has is, is been a great rider. I've known Travis a long time. I was there at his very first contest right here on. in Portland, Oregon. With his bright red hair. I hope I can find the photo that... Uh, <laughs> you got to find the photo. <laughs> it's good, but he's always been an amazing rider. Always brought a good vibe to everything and, uh, and a funny guy. And, uh, but oh, this last edit that he put out, uh, once again, shows a lot of great flatland tricks, but also some great street flatland, you know, hybrid riding. The influence is there. It's yeah. it's starting to get blurry where Anywhere flat starts and street ends or vice mm -hmm. versa. Feeling and and I'm all for that. I'd love to I'd love to ride around skate parks. I can't do much, but I mean, just to flow around a bowl or a, a half pipe is fun. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, you've got, uh, you got a, where to go? It's over here. It's over there. You've got a street bike over there. Uh, I've got a, I've got a Sunday. Yeah. You know that, uh, I don't even know which one it is. Is it a fun day? Is it a fun day? I think it's a fun day. It's an Aaron Ross something. Is Aaron Ross's a fun day? I don't he know. He always Whatever has a fun is. day when he rides. He he looks, he, I mean, I just like watching his edits. They're cool. <clears throat> so, um, so anyway, it's a very interesting thing. I, I'm really curious to see what happens here. Um, we won't spend too much time on it, but this may it spurs a discussion. Um, that edit, and then if you want to go back and check out Travis's most recent edit are worth worth a watch. Absolutely. There's going to be links in, in the show notes, but uh, I think... Uh, I think this may be something you start seeing a lot more of. So. Yeah, <laughs> and it's only a good thing. Expose more street riders to Flatland and vice versa. You know, companies mm -hmm. sell more parts. It, it, it's not going to hurt. Absolutely. So speaking again of people that are innovating, we have an innovating exclusive. for a long time. Absolutely. I mean, we're putting. I mean, we're talking about work put in for oh, the yeah. long haul. Oh yeah, long haul. Uh, someone that we've got. I saw a truck outside. I didn't quite understand. A big satellite truck right outside. That's right. The, we the have door. we have our first <coughs> Flatland TV exclusive yeah. uh, live event. Yeah, very live. Yeah, um, but this is something cool. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's an honor to have uh, people just talk to us that have been in the game for that long. Absolutely. And so uh, I think we've got somebody on the line right now. Who do we got? We do. We've got Mr. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to say the infamous Pete Brandt. Pete Brandt, live Pete and Brandt. direct. That's right. So, uh, Pete, we can uh, we can see you now on the screen here, yeah. and uh, just hey, how you doing? Doing good. Oh, right on. Uh, uh, so, let's turn this up a little bit. I can barely hear him. There we go. A little I better. Can hear him a little bit better now. So, uh, Pete, we can kind of see in the background there, but where where are you actually riding today? 
I'm at the notorious uh, San Francisco clock tower. The clock tower, and, and if you've ever seen a video of Pete, you probably have seen the clock tower. Oh yeah, really cool place to ride. I lived in San Francisco for about two years, and I rode there as much as I could, and it's it's always a fun place. Uh, there's there's a lot Interesting of Interesting characters. Definitely a lot yeah. of characters. When we can see some of them in the background. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, sorry, Pete. Thanks for doing the interview. And basically, what have you been up to lately? Uh, just a lot of riding, making up new styles, and just uh, staying focused and motivated, man. Trying to motivate others as well, and just keep it rolling, you know. That's yeah, good. absolutely. Um, we obviously know, and everybody who's watching knows that you've been riding for for a long time. You've been putting in the work. You've been helping the sport. You're doing tricks and shows and and videos uh, for for a long, long time. But outside of Flatland, what what are you into? Um, I do a lot, <laughs> you know, it all depends on what it is, you know, sometimes I work on different projects, helping people out with different things, like with music and stuff, I've done some intricate uh, sound bites and stuff yeah. for different video sections, so I'm really a lot into music as well as uh, just writing and just developing different things and modifying and just uh, basically creating, you know, that's what it is all around, just trying to keep things uh, fresh and new and make things better, you know. Right on, right on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, so, so kind of speaking of, of music, actually, I was down the street uh, at a contest. How long ago was that? God, I don't even know. Maybe ten, almost ten, oh, over 10 years ago. Maybe 11, 11, 11 years ago. No, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Um, that Pete was DJing out. Great contest, did a great job. And he actually did a bunch of riding, like right in between. DJing and riding. Yeah, DJing and riding. It, 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 was, it was really cool and really a lot of fun. Yeah, actually, that was uh, that was Chris Day's uh, contest series and stuff, and mm. we were just basically trying to get things going, you know, to cap some things happen in uh, in the U.S. You know, always a struggle to have competitions continue, you know, sure. and luckily, mm. you know, recently over the past few years, you know, it's getting to be more successful and stuff. So, you know, hopefully, uh, we see a little bit more of that in the future. But not to get off the topic, yeah, I was just doing some music with a good friend of mine, just to keep people uh, inspired and pumped. Right on. Right yeah, on. That, that, that was really cool. Definitely a great vibe there. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely something that, that uh, I'm going to remember for, for quite a long time. Uh, so speaking of memories, yeah. you know, Pete, you know, you've been around a long time. You've done a lot of great things. You know, what are some of the memories that stick out in your mind from riding? There's so many. You know, that's the thing that's crazy is some people think, like, uh, you know, riding is a hobby or something like that. Some people it is, you know, but for me it's been a, an entire life, not just a lifestyle. <clears throat> so, I mean, I've had so many moments, you know, good and bad, you know, but definitely more good than bad. So I think some of the most uh, amazing moments that I've had riding, one was uh, creating a solo DVD that I really uh, just pushed, yeah. you know, I made the music for it. I also uh, made up specific tricks for it, you know, so I really set goals for it. And uh, luckily that came out exactly how I wanted it to for the most part. And um, other than that, like as far as uh, contests go, I think some of the best, like Ninja Spin, that's a really, uh, I almost remember that like it was yesterday, is awesome. Everybody riding and, you know, it's unlike a lot of contests in the U.S. There was not a street rider to be found. It was all <laughs> flatland. It was like an entire world of flatland in one place and Braun flat ground as well. There was sure. riders from everywhere that were just pushing it and just like going off and it's just everybody was feeding off each other and that was just an amazing vibe and I was lucky to be there and uh, get to partake in that. It's awesome. Yeah, those are those are definitely some some cool events, cool contests. Those contests stick out in my mind as some of the two that, like those two contests especially with those like the series the, of all those contests. The, the series, yeah. like the tricks that were introduced oh, yeah. during that series. like It was like this transition. It was like that transition period where the contests in the U.S. were starting to die down. Yeah. Contests in Europe were really starting to be on the rise. Yeah. So uh, great contest. We'll uh, post some links to some of the videos that are out there for yeah, those. Yeah, you should watch them. So check those out for sure. Uh, but speaking of links and tricks. And tricks, yeah, Pete. Yeah, Pete has been, uh, you know, I think known for creating a lot of the tricks that most people are doing today. And I've been doing it for years. You know, Pete, what are some of the tricks that you're most proud of that you've created? Um, most proud of, I think, is developing styles. Uh, the trick that a lot of people know me for, it's one of the first tricks that I made up. And actually, the first trick that I got in the magazine with, with uh, it was the Crack Packer. And that was uh, different than a wheelchair because a wheelchair is kind of like a funky chick. And a lot of people call it a wheelchair or a gliding wheelchair. But it's, in fact, a Crack Packer because I remember actually hearing about Kevin Jones doing the Hitchhiker, of course. 
there was something on Flat Matters that we talked about that. And for the most part, I mean, that trick kind of opened up a lot of doors, no handed behind the seat, turbining, uh, a lot of jump switches, a trick that's still done to this day. It's kind of a, you know, a staple and, you know, as far as rolling tricks and stuff like that, it hasn't lost its edge because it's, you know, it's a rolling trick, you know, you don't, it doesn't involve mm -hmm. kicking the tire and that type of sure. thing to keep the oh, bike's yeah. momentum going. So um, that's one of them, but I mean, there's also a street sweeper, which is kind of an upside down, uh, it's kind of a dump truck on the inside going inward, scuffing. That trick right there kind of opened okay, up yeah. doors for inward scuffing. And then there's also ambidextrous switches that I did. You could see in Reala TV, one and two, where I actually jump and switch feet, you know, and that actually opened up to switch feet rolling style tricks even to this day. So, I mean, for me, it's like I just try to push it and the direction that feels natural and just, uh, you know, having the progression as well, you know, keep it fresh and new. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, progression for sure. And, and if anybody has seen Pete ride it, it, it does. It looks completely natural. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he is innovating and just like he says, modifying, creating. I mean, so the crack packer, hands down. I mean, that's one of my favorite tricks to do today. You do that a little bit. Oh, I do. I do a little bit. I yeah. like, you know, love just taking the hands off, you know. And just it feels like you're floating. It's sure. it's great, you know, Pete. So we're we're running a little bit out of time here. Yeah. Um, you know, are there any shout outs that you'd like to give to anybody? Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Uh, sh yeah, definitely. Shout out to you guys for having me on the show, of course. And uh, Flat Matters, a uh, lot of uh, support there. And of course, all the companies: Marty Copa, Vicky Gomez, Phoenix Bikes, Quamen. Uh, man, the list goes on, you know, it's just everybody's gave me a lot of support over the years and I really appreciate it and won't ever forget it and that's part of the motivation that keeps me going and definitely uh, not forgetting sequence as well and intertwine and uh, I'd like to thank pretty, pretty much everybody along with the haters that basically, you know, <laughs> try to doubt things sometimes that motivation comes from, <coughs> you know, sure. finding out your own yep. confidence, you know, between, uh, you know, the haters and the people that are given the love, you know, all together it's energy. And that's what it creates yeah. and keeps it going, man. Definitely. Well, definitely. Right on, man. Definitely well, agree with that. <clears throat> you know, Pete, we got to say thanks so much for joining us. This has been a, uh, you know, from time ago when I'd see you in the magazine to time now when I can actually interview you face-to-face. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of face-to-face. -face. <laughs> uh, Through live via live satellite. Via satellite. Uh, this has been an honor, and thanks so much. We're going to check out uh, the web. We'll be scanning that for any new edits that come out. I think mm -hmm. OSG just posted one, so check that out. Uh, and, and just thanks again, Pete. All right, thanks, man. Peace. Cool, peace. All right, we'll see you later, man. So, man, our first interview in, in, the, in the can, as you might see, I didn't totally screw that one up this time. No, no, not at all. Audio is working this time. So Pete, Pete's just a wonderful guy. I mean, I, I rode with him for a very short time when I lived in, in San Francisco, and it, he's, he's just a motivator. Oh, he's yeah. he's going to help you. If you need help, he's going to push you. If you need pushing, and, and just watching him, and it, it's it's great uh, that we have we have yeah. people like that, you know, around that we you know we can look up to and and, and ride for. And thanks to the wonderful technology, we had a, just a wonderful live interview. <laughs> Speaking of live, <laughs> live, <laughs> no, but wow. uh, yeah. So anything, uh, anyway, coming up soon. We've got yeah. a pretty busy month of uh, April. Right, contest season is upon Ooh. us. You know, the weather starts to break, it starts to stop raining, and all of a sudden, yeah. contests pop up. What's the first one coming up? Big well, one. We've got right here. This the the. Oh, well, the, so the first one isn't that big, but well, well we've got a know. couple jams coming up. Right. But the big contest is Joma Pro for sure. Oh yeah. Let's let's go. Through, let's run through the list here. So, first contest we've got. It's going to be on the second and the third of April. It's going to be Spring Jam in, in France. France. Yeah. Yep. So check that out. It's listed on Global right now. And another jam that's coming up um, that same weekend same jam, yeah. is uh, Studio City Jam. So all the guys in Hollywood and, and SoCal, they've been doing this a lot more lately. They've been putting on jams in the Studio City parking lot. You know, it, it always draws a good crowd, a good vibe. And, uh, you know, we look forward to the footage from there. Absolutely. I'm really glad they're putting on events. You know, at the West Coast, we've been doing a lot better job of getting jams together. We're trying. <clears throat> Wouldn't be far off that there might be some contests we hope here so. on the West Coast. Yeah. So Speaking of, like, proper contests. Proper contests. Yeah. I think one of the, the big ones, which is tour stop number two mm. for the American Flatland uh, uh, League. League. The big No, Joel. not American Flatland League. American Flatland. Yeah. Circuit? Circuit. American Flatland Circuit. I'm screwing it up. Deal. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
big contest, Jomo Pro. Jomo Pro, and this is uh, this is proven to be a, a must-go-to event, and I wish we could go to it. I wish we could, I know. But uh, it's just incredibly busy right now. But yeah, Joma Pro coming up on the uh, the eighth through the tenth. Yep. So that's street. That's flat. That's the whole deal. Yep. Um, no pro. No pro street. So it's amateur street and park, and it is pro uh, pro flatland amateur experts master. Whole shebang. I think they have a master's class. Yeah. So with any luck, like they did last year, we'll see a stream of that. I have not heard yet yeah, if they're going to stream it. I don't know. If they don't. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a video put out sometime, somewhere, so uh, can't wait to see that, and good luck to everybody who's who's entering that. Okay. After that, we've got another big one big that one? T came up earlier, actually. Yeah, and mm. uh, another one that we wish we could have gone to, which yeah. is a uh, Ninja Spin. There's a Ninja Spin. It's going to be on the 16th and 17th of April. Yeah. Hands down, always a good contest, always great footage. Look for the, the web edits for that. Um, it's in the south in of France. Southern France. Yeah, yeah. so it's going to be picturesque and beautiful, and, and if you can make it there, I'm sure you're going to have a good time. Uh, the riding will be off the hook for sure. Absolutely. That's put on by uh, Mr. Alex Joomlin, Yeah. who's just been knocking out of the park. He just opened up a store, I believe. Really? Yeah, it's really cool. you have to check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have some links to uh, to some photos that he posted, but looks really, really cool. He's doing some great things. Always, is, always, always has knocked it out of the things, park. Yeah. Always knocked it out of the park. Uh, a little bit further east, if you're traveling that way, yep. in uh, Indonesia, we've got the Indonesia BMX Open Championship uh, Round 2. Yep. And, and, and uh, as we know from some of the diversion videos, action sports is a big deal in that part of the world. Big deal. Big deal. Yeah. It's not just flatland, but, you know, the it, whole deal. It, it's, it's huge. It's huge over there. Yeah. You know, um, so That's on the cool 23rd? Yep. 23rd of April? That's right. So check that out. Um, Hopefully I we'll hope. Have, yeah. We see some uh, of the the heavy hitters in Asia yeah. attend that contest. I hope we hopefully there'll be some footage before we tape the next show. But I think we're going to be taping the next one a little early uh, due to some traveling conflicts. Sure, I think yes. Um, but the last contest, which uh, isn't, I wouldn't, I don't even think it's that big of a contest, but it's it's definitely worth noting. And it's local ish. Mm -hmm. Not local for us. Well, but <laughs> local for the. The North American community. North American community, yeah. The, uh, the Twilight Comp on the 30th. Yeah. 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 That should be a good one here in good old USA. Yeah. So check that out. All the links are on Global Flat. We'll have links to that in the show notes, of course. And, Absolutely. Uh, and uh, definitely want to put a big shout out to Martin at Global Flat. Um, done a great job with the site, managing the site, doing some great things for the world of Flatland. It's so easy <clears> to <throat> submit your event details. Really you know, just... it. You know, it, it really doesn't take that much effort uh, if you want to do something as... as small as a jam, you can just, you can, you can do it. It doesn't take that much effort. Yeah. Uh, get your community involved, get your riders involved, get the street riders involved, get everybody involved, and right. it'll be a fun event. Absolutely. I, I mean, every, we're all BMXers. You know, we always have street riders at our events. They love it. So, you know, big thanks to Martin, who I know just watched our show, and he <laughs> sent me a really cool little picture of him watching it, and uh, it should be located somewhere on the screen. Yeah. But uh, big thanks to Martin for helping us out. For sure. If you, want, if you want your event listed on our show, head over to Global Flat or global-flat.com. Make sure that you fill out the form and get your event put up there, and we'll be sure to talk about it. It's one of the first sites okay. I check every morning just to see what's posted. That and Flat Matters. I just I, I check every day. I check our download numbers every morning, and then I check Global Flat. <laughs> <laughs> check those too, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that uh, brings us to a close here today. Episode uh, four is in the can. In the can yeah. with Fat Albert. Um, so if you want to check out anything uh, that we've talked about today on the show, head, head on over to our website at flatwebtv.com. Click on episode number four, and you'll get all the links to today's show. All the notes. Absolutely. Yep. We'll have all the links to everything we've talked about. Um, check us out on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash everydaytropic. Um, you can connect with me, communicate with me there. We're also on Facebook as well. iTunes, the whole deal. Yeah, we're on pretty much everything. Check us out on iTunes. Um, and we're still diligently trying to get us on TiVo, and it's yeah. a nightmare. Really? It's a nightmare to get through with those guys. So and if, you, if, if anybody knows anybody <laughs> at TiVo, and uh, yeah, you can TiVo help get, people. Yeah, if you can get us up on uh, TiVo's little video cast space, that'd be great. And we're looking to expand. Uh, and it should be really good. We've got some cool up-and-coming stuff. Uh, we're yeah. working on uh, getting a few more t-shirt designs going. Yeah, there might be some something coming up something, real soon. Something going on. Real We've soon. got uh, 
another mid-release, uh, mid middle month edit coming out. Uh, should be great. Yeah, where are you going? Let's give them a little teaser. Where are you going? Well, uh, next week we are taking a huge road trip. You are taking a huge road trip. <laughs> we, I. You. Yeah. Not me. And about 10 other stinky 30-something year olds. 30 plus. 30 plus. Uh, we're going to the old school reunion at Woodward West. Boo. Um, boo. I don't get to go. Jealous? I am jealous. I'm 27 years old. You know, for half of the audience, I think that's going to be nonsense. For the other half, I think they're going to be into it. Um, <laughs> but I can't wait to get down there and see all the old school riders like Eddie Fiola, Dave Norrie, Dave Volker, the whole crew. Um, I'm going down with the uh, Goods BMX crew, so it should be a fun, although crazy, road trip. It's so gonna uh, be good. it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be crazy. So look for that about the middle of April. Yeah, it yeah. should be good. And uh, I think that's it for us today. I think so that's it. thank you everybody for watching. And once again, my name is Justin Hope. I'm Anthony Gloria. And this was Flat Red TV. Hi, my name's Anthony. My name's Justin. This is Flyweb TV, where we talk about the top news and in the world of Flatland BMX. Sit back, relax. You're about to take a dream. I don't know what else to say to you. <laughs>